the Plotcast podcast with the Potty Plotters. Hello and welcome back to the Potty Plotters Plotcast podcast. This is season two, episode 28. Well, over first, you've got something right. Yeah, and you've put I'm Elaine, but I'm not Elaine. I'm Julia, no. and you are Elaine. Elaine. Yeah. yeah. You could be the other way around if you wanted. Yeah, she wrote it the wrong way, though, because she knows <laughs> you that... You could try... Why don't you, why don't you walk a mile in each other's shoes? <laughs> no. Well, yeah, Julia. Well, I can't and deck if we're the wrong side when we're talking. It all goes to pot. So, um, yes, I'm Julia. You are Elaine. I am. And I'm even and you're odd. Remember yeah. that, Elaine? Yeah, okay. I have. <laughs> okay. Now then, it's National Allotments Week this week, isn't it? It is. And it's actually coming to you now in the middle of the uh, week. And what's really good about that, Julia, it's a uh, time for people to show off what they do, how they do it and why they do it. I think that's really important. Yeah. And what I really like is a lot of allotment sites will open their gates and welcome the local community in so that people can see that... Actually, there's no great mystery about what happens on allotments. And and a lot of allotments have changed with the times now. We're certainly seeing a lot more flowers, a lot more ladies, a lot more children on the site. And toilets. Oh, toilets. Oh, very that's important. important. Now oh, then, yeah, you goodness. nearly left that oh, out, Oh, yeah, you? that's very yeah. important, yeah, actually, is. especially to encourage more ladies and, and a diverse group of people. And uh, whilst... Why is that? <laughs> I was, wondering where, was going, I was wondering saying, where she was going. I was wondering where she was going. Ladies, we've got a toilet on site. <laughs> I was wondering where she was going with that. <laughs> Up the road and round the corner. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. Anyway, what? So, <laughs> so yes, we're going to be uh, talking to p- other people. We've had loads of questions in Elaine. And we're talking produce and plots with people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, what are you doing anyway? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a morning already, haven't we? It has been quite funny. <laughs> you thought that you were recording an interview, and actually you hadn't. No. That was all good. No. I made cucumber gin because I brought a whopper in. You thought I'd grown it, and actually I've had it from Steve Plot Sick because Steve yeah, Plot Six. yes, yeah. and he's on holiday, so he doesn't even know I've got it. But I'll give him a bottle of gin back instead. Okay, but yeah. it was a whopper, yeah. nearly twenty inches. Let me tell you that, and a girth on it that most would be very proud of. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, aside from that, I've actually almost covered myself in from top to bottom with the well water because I forgot to plug the um, hose pipe into the connector for the pump so. by which time most people have turned off because they haven't got a clue what you're talking <laughs> about <laughs> No, so we basically have... you went wrong and got yeah, covered in water I did, yeah. and you don't smell very pleasant thanks very much that's all that's right. all it's a right. pleasure on a hot nicely, day though. yeah I've dried <laughs> off well, yeah. um, and what's this at the side of me oh that's... this is a whopper Julia this yeah. fills my hand Yeah, it's a, a handful of delight it is don't say that very often no, do I it's a beef master tomato, um, and I've taken it off for Gareth. Oh, oh no. I love your beef master. Is that the of the season? Mm-hmm. No, he wouldn't have the first one. I have to have the first one. Well, that's a bit selfish. I'd have given him my first. Would that's you? like having a Rolo. <laughs> oh, no, maybe not. I'll eat that myself. No, it's yeah. the last Rolo. Uh, um, oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, anyway, well, you won't right, give him you your last to roll, though, would you? Oh, give can't me wait first, never me last. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so well, it's a beautiful go, tomato. Mm. It's about the size of a what? hand. Well, Elaine's hand. And now it there's fills a big my hand, actually, yeah. Garrett. It fills mine as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Julia. Uh, can you hold that big tomato? <laughs> would, you like, would you like a hand? Well. Would you like a hand? That's more than a handful for me. So it's about anyone listening. It's about the size of a cricket ball, I would expect. Maybe a bit bigger. When the hell did you last play cricket? That's not. That's like huge. Uh-huh. What is it the size of, Gareth? Uh, it's the size of about one and a half cricket balls, I'd oh, say. A big orange. One of them large it oranges. Is, yeah, yeah. 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 Great fruit. A great, I was going to say that. I was going to go there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, it's perfect. So anyway, there you go, Gareth. We're not even talking about that. I just thought I'd point it out that it's at the side and well done, Julia. Thank you. Contact the Potty Plotters anytime on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Potty Plotters or email naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk. Okay, so we've had emails with questions in Elaine, and yeah. we've had an email in from Sue in Bramhall in Manchester. That sounds posh. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to read it then? Oh, uh, right, okay, because I wrote it down, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I have to write it down because we can't memorise all this, can no. we? So, from Sue, I'm looking for some answers as to why my courgettes have not all been edible this year. I've grown courgettes successfully in pots in my greenhouse for the past few years. However, this year, many of the vegetables, fruits, berries, not sure of what their classification is, have rotted at the flower. Now, that's funny because, anyway, I'll, we'll carry on. Yeah. But are healthy at the stalk end. Do you have any 
answers why this may be so and that I can then avoid it next year. Still listening and loving the podcast. Oh, good, Sue. Sue. Well done, Sue. Aww. Well done, she remembers. Sue. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It. Well, first of all, Sue, they are called fruits. They are the courgettes. We refer to them as fruits, but I don't know why, because they're not a fruit, but... Anyway, let's move aside from that. <laughs> and first of all, uh, courgette plants. At the start of a season, you will find generally that the first couple of courgettes that you see growing start to rot. And, and like you say... Start to what? Rot. 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 Okay. So they kind of uh, swell at the end nearest the plant, but then the, f- the end where you've got the flower, they tend to just shrivel up and they're very kind of thin and shrivelly and not very nice looking and you probably wouldn't use them. And actually a lot of people cut those first few off and dispose of them and that's really probably the best thing to do with them because they're not really usable. Then as the season goes on, you, den- you tend to find that the ones that develop start to develop as you would expect normal courgettes to develop. However, this year we have had a really bad year for pollinators. It's not been great, has it, Elaine? I mean, we've no. spoken about it quite a few times. There's been a lack of pollinators about. Yeah, and I think that's particularly relevant. There's two things. I was going to say a lot of people have asked us this and yeah. talked about it when we've been out and about up and down the country. But also, um, lack of pollinators is very relevant to National Allotment it Week is. because we're talking about biodiversity. Yeah. The difficulty we've got, isn't it, that if we haven't got any pollinators, you don't get anything. No, you don't get anything. So... And that has been the cause of your problem, really. It's the fact that the pollinators haven't been into the male flowers and transferred the pollen over to the female flowers, which has then enabled the fruits to develop fully and properly and grow as you would normally expect a courgette to grow. So what I would suggest is get the paintbrush out. Get your paintbrush out. And we're not talking about the one that you use to paint your ceilings, Elaine. (laughs) That's a bit too big. No, Elaine, you need need a specific paintbrush for this. (laughs) All right, okay. No, I don't want you to go out. Not a big roller. Yeah, no, don't get your rollers out. Don't get the ones that you do in your your front lounge with. Get the ones out that you had in your, when you were at school and you you were in your art class and, and those. <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. I but, do, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I got an AO level at art. Did you? Yeah, I know you're quite uh, surprised. No, I'm now. Not. So is everybody no, else. I'm but, not yeah. surprised at all. You're very, very talented. Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, said with feeling? Not brackets, brackets. <laughs> okay. So, so I feel the, that's revenge. Yeah, so art, art kind of brushes is what you're looking for. Yeah. Or if you've got a feather knocking around. <laughs> Never knocking around. Like, now you what may kind laugh. Of person has a feather, feather just knocking, knocking around. around. Now you're laughing at that. And With Gareth, heart, yes. Gareth, I'm going to refer back to something you were saying earlier about on the about, bird. about the cat bringing what? the bird. Yeah, it was, only, it, it was a baby bird. Yeah, but you often find, well, I do anyway, where the cats have been. There's usually a few feathers <laughs> knocking around. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, if people are <laughs> laughing about this on their way to work, I don't know what they'll Can be Can I just put a, 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 a little insurance point at this point? Yeah, we don't want anyone plucking any birds. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, we're not taking any responsibility. <laughs> No responsibility taken here if you have an accident whilst driving to work this <laughs> okay. Nothing at all. Do not get in touch. <laughs> OK. So oh, having oh, acquired dear. your paintbrush and your fe- or your <laughs> feather or, you know, anything like that, then what you want to do is transfer the pollen from the male flower to the female flower. Now, if you don't know what they look like, um, pretty much nature is like humans, really. Well, we are... <laughs> 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 You've been hating that chip. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the flowers behind the female flower is a, a small swelling, <laughs> right? Which is the fruit developing. Yeah. And behind the male flower, there's a very long, thin stem. And actually, oh. when the flower opens, yeah, they look like male and female bits. Okay. So it's quite easy to determine that you have to transfer one to the other. On both. So, yeah. So Mm. that's all you need to do. And that will improve the pollination and you will get uh, full-size courgettes off them. 
but you might have to do it for the pollinators instead. Now, the only thing that you can perhaps think of doing in the future is planting more plants around the yeah, courgettes yeah. that are going to attract the pollinators. Yeah, that's a good so, idea. So, you know, things like lavenders, um, more flowers. Yeah, anything. snapdragons. Oh, yeah, they anti love Anti-Rhinums, yeah. anti-Sheila, anti-Joy, so whatever it might be. <laughs> because when you think about it, what Sue said is, going back to the original, she put them in the green dragging house. Dragging it back. Yeah, <laughs> dragging it back. Yeah, there I yeah. was. Because that's yeah. what you do, evidently. But um, it was just the fact that she said she'd kept them in the greenhouse, and I'm wondering if that's got something to do with it as well. Yeah, but she's never had problems before. So I think it is just yeah, this year yeah. it's been the lack of pollinators. Can I put an appeal out? Yeah. Can we, if anybody's listening that keeps bees, can yeah. they get in touch with us? Because I'd like to sort of have a talk to people about the pollination issue that we've discussed quite at length this year. Yeah. And I want to know about it from a beekeeper's point of view. So if you're a beekeeper and you'd like to talk to us, get in touch with us, email us naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk and I'd like to get you on one week because I want to sort of see how bad it's been for you guys. Yeah, yeah. if because, the bees have died. Because yeah. we haven't seen a huge number up no, until no. recently. I mean, we are, we're recording yeah. this, uh, as we say, the beginning of National Allotments Week. So yeah. this is Sunday the 11th, 11th yeah. Yeah, right. of August. And it is going to be the hottest couple of days of the year over the next couple yeah. of days. And there's, I've seen quite yeah. a few bees out and about this morning. But up until a few weeks ago, yeah, nothing. nothing. Yeah. So from a, from a beekeeper's point yeah. of view, if you're a beekeeper and you listen to this and you haven't had a crash on the road to work yet, <laughs> get in touch with us because we'd like to have a chat with you. And it's not just the bees that they've been a lack of. You know, it's all the other pollinators. Hover flies, the flies black every, flies, yeah. harvest flies. We've had blooming green fly and black fly. We yeah, had that at yeah. the beginning when we had all that damp. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, we'll leave it at that then, shall we? But the moths and the, you know, the butterflies, there's been a lack of them as well. Where yeah. are they all? Yeah, Sue, that's what you need to do, get your paintbrush anyway. Yeah, and Sue, thanks for writing in, because I tell you what, that has made us laugh like you would not believe. The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. So you may remember that we asked people to get in touch and send us pictures, and if they wanted to ask you a question and describe their plot and some of their successes, so somebody already has done. Hi, Plotters, I'm Gemma from South East London. Um, I have an allotment. Um, which I absolutely adore. Um, my successes this year have been runner beans. They're not stringy. Corn on the cob, sweet corn, which normally fail with. Um, but my failures have been parsnips. I've got four. Um, I've only just started listening to your to your podcast. I wished I'd known about the takeaway pot trick before then, but it's definitely something I'll be doing again next year, your way. and. Also, my question to you would be loofers. I've heard you mention loofers. I've just acquired a secondhand polytunnel, which will be up and running next year. Um, so I wondered if you could give me some some tips on growing loofers. Um, I've already bought the seeds, so that would be great. Thank you. Well, thanks for getting in touch. Isn't it lovely that people in London are that getting in touch? London. Yes, <laughs> London. London. Yes. Yeah, we went there city. once. Do you remember? We there twice. Oh, oh, we went yeah. first, yeah. yeah. yeah Gareth, to the posh bit. Yeah, yeah. we did. Chelsea. Yeah, it yeah. was very, very nice. Yeah, we're, um, not allowed, we're not allowed in London again, are we? No, we're not allowed near any celebrities again. <laughs> it's the Carry on. Trading <laughs> orders. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, what I'd like to say is that I love growing loofers. I love talking about them and everything to do with them. So what I'm going to tell you is wait now Gemma wait until um, spring next year so put this in with your planning and yes you can grow them in a polytunnel or any greenhouse now then what you do is you set them off exactly the same as you do a cucumber and the difference being they are much more spindly that's how I would describe them and the leaves smell when you rub them they smell of cabbage I think they smell of cabbage but a lady yesterday because um, we had an open day at a different allotment site where we've grown loads of them and there they are in the greenhouse looking absolutely splendid I will say and the lady rubbed the um, leaf and said no she said I think they smell of peanuts and I thought yes that's it now Julia's looking gone out at me you've not got a speaking part yet Yet, Julia, but no. in a minute we're going to go into your polytunnel. Oh, you can't smell anything. No, I can't can you? smell anything. Can you smell anything? Yeah. Right, so we'll have a bit of a sniff test, shall we? And uh, see what you think they smell of. But then what you do is you grow them up a vine. 
up the vine rather so what you do is you put either netting out or string or something similar and all I do is I grow them up a net and they climb because they've got tendrils and they climb up um, and the good thing is what we can tell you we will be doing them next year and in the spring and we'll show you literally how to do it because if we did them like cucumbers we could do them with the string at the bottom of the oh, pot yes, julia yeah. do you remember when we did those before in yeah. the polytunnel yeah. and they worked a treat i've got they? mine strung up at the moment one question to ask you then elaine because it's the first time i've grown them in the polytunnel yeah. um is when the loofah sets yeah do i then need to pinch out the end of that shoot so that they energy all goes into the loofah yeah you can do if you want to or you can leave them to run rampant and that's mm. what i've done on the other plot because on the other plot there's plenty of room in that greenhouse and i'd like to fill that with it because we put loads and loads of ore smuck at the we bottom did. and so they should be able to just go wild and the good thing is they've set loads and loads of loofahs but they're only about three inches four inches at the moment right. but watch what happens because the more water you give them like cucumbers the longer they actually grow so that's what i've actually done and that's what they're going to do and they won't be ready though Gemma until the first frost so round about the end of September October that's when it is that they will come to their own they are absolutely lovely to look at and they go dark brown to a black colour but they look like just a, a gone off cucumber and all you do then is you cut it off the vine and you, when you tap it the skin on the outside is like an eggshell and all you do is you pick that off and the loofah's inside, get all the uh, seeds out and give them away to all the people. That's what we do. Oh, did you ever post one to Monty Don with instructions? I'd like to post something to him, but it's not a loofah. <laughs> Well, we've had an Instagram message mm. as well coming in, and this was from Do Farming. And what they've actually said is, I love taking time to side shoot my tomatoes you see that don't sound right does it <laughs> but i'm not I'm sure if, i'm not sure that <laughs> i've had you seen the word side shoot used as a verb before <laughs> oh, i like it though I actually, side I, shoot I, I i'm going that. side shooting i get that what you're saying because it's actually very satisfying to pinch out the side shoot yeah it is and yeah. it's a different way of saying it i like yeah. it yeah. anyway they've gone on to say but i've accidentally grown a bush tomato Ooh. called red alert can you please tell me, can I keep them, how do I keep them under control or do I let them go rampant? Oh, now, I've seen this uh, reel, this Instagram reel. Oh, could that, you with uh, language? Was, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. It was like a oh. little video clip oh, right, thing, right? Okay. So I've seen it and we had a lovely tour of the polytunnel and you've got so many lovely looking tomatoes and they were going great guns and you were side shooting them and it was brilliant. And then, of course, you come across these enormous absolutely enormous red alert plants and i've never seen anything like it elaine honestly they have grown rampant they have grown uh, so big and bushy but they are absolutely covered in flowers now the problem with what, what like sort of like a a cordon tomato or just a giant bush variety just a giant bush really? so they're not traveling up they're almost like spreading all over the oh, floor right. uh, because obviously uh, you've planted them expecting them to be a cordon and then they've kind of bushed, bushed out. out so ideally bush varieties are grown outside yeah. that's the general rule that they tend to be grown outside more than um, in the polytunnel or greenhouse it's more the cordons you grow inside now this these ones that you've you've put in the video they are absolutely covered in tomatoes now the thing with bush varieties is they tend to crop very closely together so unlike a cordon variety that obviously grows up the um, stem and each kind of truss will then ripen and set and you know then you can harvest them and then yeah. another couple of weeks we'll get more and more and more bush like variety. a vine like a vine tomato, tomato. Yeah, yeah yeah the traditional type. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so whereas a bush variety tend to crop much closer together all the flowers come t t tend to come roughly within a, a short period of time about a month six weeks and they're ready within a very clo much closer period of time now the problem with the having so many flowers on your tomato plant is the fact that i think even if they were po all pollinated and ready to set the tomato the tomato itself would have problems sustaining that many tomatoes do you understand what i'm so saying So the plant that? will get worn the, out yeah the plant will get worn out and so there's two things you can either do 
because they have got so many uh, truss arms with, with flowers on, you could remove a couple of them and just allow the plant to focus on one or two of the uh, trusses that are coming and out. that won't harm the plant? That won't harm the plant. No, it'll just be able to then focus the energy. The other alternative is just to let it go and use it as an experiment. And, Ooh, and yeah. actually, we like an experiment, yeah, don't we? So, yeah. you know... Either yeah. way, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just, um, you know, you know now next year not to plant really a bush variety inside. But let's see what happens. Um, you know, some will set, but I just fear that it may take, well, it will take a lot of watering and a lot of feeding to sustain that many tomatoes on the plant. Let us know how you go on. Yeah. Contact the Potty Plotters anytime on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Potty Plotters or email Naughty Corner at PottyPlotters.uk Right then, Julia, this one um, came in from somebody and, and the person's name is Jennifer Dory. Now, do you remember when we went to uh, the south of Derbyshire to do a bit of a talk to about 500 people under a bandstand oh, quite yeah. recently. It yeah. was Were you conducting them? I could have. Yeah. I could have. I could have taken over, I'd obviously. Say, it was a lovely, what I class as a traditional park. It had got beautifully maintained grass. The borders were full of beautiful bedding plants. And they had this fantastic bandstand in the middle. And I they, know the park you referred yeah. to. So I grew up around the corner. Oh. Oh. And it really was lovely. And all yeah. credit to the people who maintain it. And there was a, um, a band on, and we were kind of the filling in between the band, weren't we? Yeah, a bit like a cake, <laughs> yeah. a sweet bit in the middle. Yeah, or something they didn't like let you that. sing then? No, no, no. no. I did threaten them, yeah. yeah. But uh, it was funny. Yeah. Right, well, we did a little session, and um, we got our bras out that were filled. Yeah, with, we were chucking uh, cucumbers at yeah. people. Yeah, oh, yeah. we chucked everything at people, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. And quite to their surprise. And, and actually, some tomatoes. No, do you remember you said, well, we've got flowers on our little oh, gosh, display yeah. stand, and when we got and you said help yourself there for free and when we got back there was nothing left of our display stand was there <laughs> no it was funny we've had our chairs if we <laughs> if we hadn't had someone sitting on yeah, it's it's that part of Derbyshire. Yeah. <laughs> but it was funny but what happened was um somebody put their hand up and they were talking about the problem they'd got with slugs yes now this made me laugh because when I got home there was an email that had come through and it said fabulous talk at music in the park today. I wrote down that for slugs I needed to water in lemon to <laughs> <laughs> lemon toes toast and I have googled both and I can't seem to find anything. <laughs> Can I answer this one? Yeah. I think you need nematodes. Yeah. <laughs> I laugh my head off <laughs> because I like the sound of lemon toes. Can we can we uh, trademark that? Yes, probably. Yes, but yes, unfortunately, Jennifer, it was the way that we were talking on top of that microphone, and um, that's what yeah. it was that it obviously sounded like. Yes, lemon spray lemon your lemon toes. <laughs> spray your slugs with lemon yeah. toast. So no, we were talking about nematodes, weren't we, Elaine? We were. And uh, we were talking specifically about Nemo Slug because as many people have um, spoken to us this year and, and we've witnessed them ourselves on, on some of the plots we've been helping out on the slugs and snails have been rampant this year they have got armies they've been reproducing in numbers quite unprecedented and so the way that we've dealt with it and we got in there early because we do it every year is we've got some uh, nematodes and the, the brand called Nemoslug and we watered them in and they're basically little microscopic organisms that go in and they will kill the slugs underneath the ground because 70% of them are in the, in the soil and so that's what we were talking about so that's what you need Jennifer you need nematodes looks like mushroom pate mm. <laughs> the Plotcast podcast with the potty plotters Right, well, we had a, another one in from Joanne Turner who wrote in with this problem that I think we are very familiar yep. with, Julia. So it says, hi, ladies, help me. Well, I know that feeling. I have a lovely garden, but I have a nemesis bindweed. How do I get rid of this horrible stuff? It grows up my plants and the fence and it upsets me. 
um, to see it killing my plants. Please help me. Now, I know that it does kill plants. It does. It will strangle them if you don't get hold of it. It does. And we've said, although we've got mare's tail on the plots as well, we've said that bindweed is worse than mare's tail because actually um, mare's tail looks a mess on the plot sometimes when you've got loads of it, but it's not going to damage the plants really. Whereas bindweed will strangle all the plants in its path and and that's the problem and I looked at it because I actually thought oh is it my hairdresser is written in because she asked me the same question when I was having my hair cut this week about bindweed How relevant, in Julia. the garden yeah talking about bindweed while doing your hair yeah yeah mm, okay <laughs> <laughs> well, she knows I know a thing or two about these things. And mm. so we were talking about because it, it was strangling her hydrangea and she was quite upset about it. So, again, I said, give her the advice that I know that you're going to give, which was get yourself a cane or a or a big kind of, uh, some kind of steak, Stick, not the yeah. ones that go with your fish and chips. Uh, no, you don't have go. fish and chips and steaks. That's because you're a vegetarian. Surf you don't turf. know. <laughs> yeah, just get yourself a cane. And what you want to do is put it where you can see the bindweed is kind of active and, and moving. And that will encourage the bindweed to grow up that. You stick it than, in the ground, Stick it you? in the ground, right next to the plant that you're trying to save. And then let the bindweed travel up that cane. And when it gets up the cane and you've got quite a bit of growth, get the SBK, Sierra Bravo Kilo. You love a bit of that. Blimey. Yeah. Whoa. SBK. Yeah. And get your paintbrush out. Not the one that you use in earlier oh, for tickling. Not, no, no, not that one. No, no, no. no, no. You need, Don't, you need oh, a separate we one. Need a <laughs> set. We need a whole set. Yeah, go and get go. yourself a cheap set of kids' paintbrushes. Yeah. That's the best advice I'm going to give yeah. today. And then mark up which one's had the SBK on yeah. because you don't want to confuse it. No, because no. you do not want to be pollinating with your SBK brush. But your SBK brush, you want to paint that on the growing tip and the couple of the the leaves further down of the bindweed as it's traveling up that cane and what that will do it won't be immediate it will take about two weeks but that will travel all the way down the bindweed right down to the roots and that will kill it off now it's not an immediate result this isn't there's going to be lots and lots of bindweed under that ground because if you were to dig it up and i'm sure many people who are listening have it's like spaghetti, spaghetti. junction down yeah, there isn't it, is. it yeah um but when we were doing that greenhouse we put that lovely big greenhouse oh, up on monday yeah. over on Catherine's plot oh, over yeah. on the back here um i noticed that she'd got canes everywhere and yeah. she is doing exactly what yeah. we've told her can you believe no. so she's doing what you've told them honestly yeah my goodness i know but it, yeah, but it does work, but you may even be doing it for a couple of years to actually get rid of all those bits that are growing up. But what it will do is go down, but it will only kill the root. It won't kill any other plants around it as long as you're just painting the leaves of the bindweed. Hints and tips for shortcuts to success. The Potty Plotters Plotcast. I'm rubbing my hands together because... I don't know why, uh, with glee. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, it is with glee because um, we're going to talk about food. Mm. It's the thing that we do, you know. I've that just what we're growing on the plot. On. Yeah. yeah, it is. And, uh, well, let's have a look. We've got a very big... I keep handling this, don't I? This very big I tomato. Want to no, yeah. not. Because <laughs> it'll have had everybody's hands all over it. <laughs> and then, Julia, you've still got your smaller than cucumber, my cucumber yeah, that yeah. wasn't mine in the first place. So that's two-thirds of a salad. Two-thirds. Right, we've oh, also... I've got lettuce. Oh, I've got lettuce. Well, ah, remember, oh, remember, finger comes up. Remember last week when we were talking about the... Uh, the the pack of seeds that you got which was the mixed leaves that we oh, said the cut and come again the cut and come again so uh, last weekend i set them in two uh, troughs in the greenhouse i've got not the big ones that the spinach is in but you know the little uh, ones we put lettuce in last year yeah, so yeah. The, the little terracotta rectangular yeah. ones so i did two of those put them at the front of the greenhouse uh watered them well and then where are we now so on sunday so i think thursday when i went out to water I noticed they germinated. Ooh. So I was I was very impressed that they germinated so quickly. So uh, the salad may be complete before we know it. Oh. Well, there you go. Now I pulled up my shallots this week, good Ooh. and proper. Yeah. So I've drying. I am drying them. Well, it won't take um, long in this. No, no, not at all. So I should be doing some pickled onions very shortly. Yeah. Oh, you can't beat it, can you? And uh, we've got loads of blackberries, so that'll be all right, won't it? For pudding, pickled black. <laughs> I thought you were putting a meal together here. Oh, yeah, I was. Well, where do blackberries fit with that? Pudding. Oh, right. Blackberries. Blueberries. All right. Okay. So you're not cooking then, are you? Hmm. Okay, then. So what else have we got that's ready on the plot? 
What else have we got? Oh, God. I've got um, aubergine. Oh, yeah, I noticed Ooh, so. I went, when I went yeah. for a little walk, I noticed the aubergine. Yeah. I've got uh, peppers. Very nice. Red ones. Yeah. Um, Chilies, I've got. Chilies, yeah. Um, what else have I got? Oh, mange too. Okay. Mange too. Any I've, more different I've, types of tomatoes rather than just that one big one? Uh, yes, I've got lots of different types of tomatoes. So I've got some uh, tagarella. Oh. I've got some shimmer. I've got some uh, scum, some called zl, 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 Latte. She's macking it up. <laughs> right, what well, about? I've got some sweet million. I've also got some... Um, Belladine? Yeah, Belladine. You like them, don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nodding his head, okay. yeah. Okay, so actually it's fair to say that we've got quite a lot that we could make a meal from. Yeah, so we've got any crisps. Weeks, so in a few weeks' time... I do time. like crisps, never mind anything else, Gareth. We want yeah, crisps. We've got, we've got, we've got, got crisps. biscuits in the barrel. I'm, I'm okay, off biscuits yeah, for a few weeks oh, because I'm going on holiday. Um, Why? Just thought I'd try it for a bit. Oh. It's only a few weeks. I'm sure yeah, I can live without them for a few weeks. I think weeks. you could have one up here. We won't tell her. Okay, fine. Okay. So in a few weeks, just before I go on holiday, we could cook the cook a meal then. Yeah, looks cool. like it. You're not cooking salad though. No, no I don't cook salad. No, no. Yeah. That's, that's, that's Master Chef when they cook, when they rock up with the salad and go, I've cooked it. No, no, no. You've chopped it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is very different. Mm. Okay, good. Well, let's think of some other favourite recipes as well. And I remember that one them. we did when we had the ecocentrics up last year when you did the uh, oh pakoras. Yeah. Oh, ooh, you've got a little in, smile on your face yeah, I don't there, Gareth. We've got enough, enough stuff ready to get into well, the Well, look at that I've phrase. Got chart, I don't yeah. know mm. if, if we've we, got enough. We. I don't yes. know if you've got enough. Yes, I would have thought yeah, so, yes. We've got enough of everything. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Let's do it. The Potty Plotters Podcast with simple recipes for gluts and guts. Hi, I'm Mandy from Matlock in Derbyshire, and I got my allotment last year. And they did tell me I didn't have to have it if I didn't want to, because it was probably one of the worst that 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 had, and um, because it was in a bit of a state of disrepair, with large tree uh, roots and stumps in there. So initially, I had to get a digger and start clearing the ground. So I followed the potty plotters for each step of the way. I've suffered with every mistake and every mishap that we've had because of the terrible weather, even down to comedy allotment in, falling, banging my head, going in A&E and getting loose eye jelly. So I've had every adventure you can imagine. Very excited to get a greenhouse. So this is one success, except don't get a dismantled one off of Facebook because then you've just got a pile of glass and a pile of metal and you don't even know what it should look like and you don't know how to put it together. So that was one mistake. However, that gave me the whole world of being able to grow tomatoes and peppers and all sorts of exciting things. And I did follow, make the mistake and not follow the advice because now it's a bit cramped and it's standing room only. Um, so that that was the only thing I didn't follow. But everything else has been brilliant. They've reassured me that it's not just me not being able to allotment. <laughs> it's because of the weather. The successes are I've had cucumbers, I've had tomatoes, I've got heaps and heaps of spinach and Swiss chard, potatoes in buckets. They talked about those. We did those. They told me not to worry that they didn't flower. And we still got potatoes. But the best success that I've had is following the little things, uh, ideas about the seeds. And we talk about the different ideas. But then we do the little projects that they talk about on the podcast as well with my grandson. So his delight in setting the seeds, watching them grow, especially doing crisp lettuce, setting the little seeds in a crisp bag after he'd eaten the crisps. So we had prawn cocktail flavour lettuce. <laughs> and he just, he's loved it. So the successes for me and not only growing the things but sharing doing the different projects doing the activities and seeing everything starting to uh, produce things so it's only just now with the weather that we're starting to see some results and I'm starting to harvest different things and I suppose my question to Elaine and Julia now is there are a few gaps where there have been mishaps and, um, you know, things have floated away because they've not got armbands in, in the weather. And I'm wondering if I can plant anything now at this point, because, you know, we're already into August, because I, I've got these bare patches and now everything's started to grow. I'm dying to get going properly. Well, 
Mandy, thanks for that. That's amazing. I didn't really think that people did all these projects that we ramble on about. No, we no. do them, but yeah. I didn't think people did. It's a bit no, like Blue Peter, isn't it? You, they sort of they do them, and you don't know if people are actually following no, along. No, no. no. Well, That's there you nice. go. Nice. That's nice. Well, I mean, another thing that we've done recently. I'm just oh yeah, cutting in from Elaine, that your grandson would probably absolutely love to do. We were given some old footballs, and we popped the inners and we cut the outside and made ourselves some hanging baskets out of the footballs and we planted them up didn't we Elaine we did. and they look brilliant and they were a real talking point so you know again it's something to get the kids involved it's something a talking point and yeah so sorry to cut in there Elaine oh, well, just, I think it makes yeah. it nice though for kids doesn't it because it's relevant yeah. as well and nobody ever did that with us no. I mean blooming heck if you got a football you would never have popped it yeah, ever no but um, I'm going to go back over some of the things that you were talking about there first of all I agree entirely with what you were saying about buying dismantled green houses. oh that did it make is, me laugh yeah, actually. it's half a job done which you think about which yeah. is great but actually it is much easier to dismantle it and put it back together yeah. again taking lots of photos so as we do it's a bit do. like Lego really isn't it? Yeah, if, you it is. if, if you haven't got the what it's supposed to look like yeah. on a bit of paper first, yeah. Yeah. then she's right. All you've got is a load of it's a kit of parts without actually knowing yeah. what the final result is. I mean, to be fair, yeah. most greenhouses are they working follow the as, same pattern. Follow the same pattern, yeah. So once you see one and you kind of, you know, I mean, we're on about our twenty six now. Yeah. If people are listening that haven't heard us talk about this before, it's some kind of strange illness that we've got. <laughs> um, but we we like to take down and put up greenhouses for people. We did. Don't we, we did one on Monday. Didn't we, we did one on Monday, and it's quite funny. <laughs> Again, going back to what you were saying, Mandy, because on Monday, um, one of the plot holders on site had asked us early, last year actually for a greenhouse, and we'd taken one down and. We'd, we'd given her all the parts and this lady, I mean, poor woman, she'd had the worst flooding I've seen probably yeah. on the site and she was really disheartened over the winter and we said, clean your greenhouse up, all the parts so that when you come to put it together, it'd be much easier if it's clean and the glass is all clean. And so she did that and, you know, she was quite happy to have a go at putting it all together herself until she came to look at all the parts again and then thought, I just haven't got a clue where to start. So asked us if we'd do it, which we quite happily did. Mm. Um, and I think once you've done a few, you kind of realise how they all go together. But if you've never done them before, yeah, like you say, it's just like being given a whole box of... Bits. Lego and, and saying we'll make something out of it and you know it well it's changed her life hasn't it oh. she's been over this morning yeah. as well and, yeah. and I think Gareth you better say the right thing that's a threat but <laughs> has it changed your life having a greenhouse yeah it has because I think before the greenhouse was put in and I did a little bit in our old house it was all outside so yeah. <laughs> there was no protection for anything and look at the weather we've had this year yeah. and yeah. even look at the weather we had for the last couple of years where it's been drought conditions this year we've had nothing but rain and in the past before the greenhouse arrived i dug out some they're not raised beds but i dug out some bits of the lawn where i'd sort of set, been able to put some pots out and st some stuff worked some stuff didn't and having the greenhouse means i can start stuff off in the greenhouse so yeah we talked about the carrots that uh, i set about a month ago now I started them off in the greenhouse so they were protected from all the elements apart from the cat that goes in <laughs> she'll, she'll dig them up before we know it and but now they that pot first pot's moved out and i've started a second pot off yeah. in there so we so i can stagger stuff off i've got the the uh pick and grow salad yeah. that i've started uh off in the greenhouse that i'll probably move out as well so it enables me to mine is only a small one it's only probably about half the size of what uh, julia's is behind yeah. but it enables me to start stuff off and protect stuff and obviously I've got the tomatoes, the cucumber, and the peppers, and the chilli in there, so everything's nice. So yeah, yeah, it's great having a greenhouse. Yeah. I mean, what I would say to anyone listening who is offered a greenhouse is, if you can be, be part of the dismantling process, and take lots of photos. I mean, that's one thing that we've all, most of us have now got with us all the time, is a, is a camera on our phone. Take lots of photographs, even from the most unusual angle, because then you'll refer to them later on if you've never done it before. And, you know, advice, right. The most essential part of your kit is going to be the WD-40 because an old greenhouse, the nuts are usually very stiff. stiff and a lot of them will shear off otherwise. But then if you are rebuilding it, unless you've got good quality nuts in there and they go 
on and off very easily get yourself some new nuts and bolts because when it comes to reassembling it can be a real pain when you're trying to hold things and and get things to rejoin together and you're fighting against something that's really not going to work. I know it's kind of against the ethos of allotment in and reusing but actually sometimes... It's only nuts and bolts isn't it? I mean yeah. you, the, the main yeah. part of it you are reusing. Yeah. You're, use, you're reusing the carcass of the greenhouse, yeah. the frame yeah. in effect you're reusing the glass, it's just the Thing, things rust so you're going to yeah. need to get some new things but I think you're right with the greenhouse side of things but then there's that sort of thing about if things haven't worked we're now in it's okay we're now in what August yeah. and this year's a difficult one to judge yeah. isn't it we've probably got what a couple of months left of the growing yeah. season yeah. so yeah. is there any th- other, we've, I've mentioned the cut and come again salad leaves yeah. that are quite I mean, it's, it's a fairly cheap pack of seeds and you've in effect got I think I gave them yeah. you Gareth yeah, I was thinking, actually I was, they were very cheap to you <laughs> they're very cheap to me but looking at the price on the front of the seeds it's a relatively cheap I tell pack. you what you yeah. can't get this stuff. <laughs> it's a relatively cheap thing to do because it, it gives you loads of yeah. for a few seeds and I think there was I think we said on last week's podcast there's a, there's about 250 seeds in there and it's different types of leaves, leaves. Yeah, yeah so for what you've paid to get that packet of seeds in effect you've got quite a lot coming in and you're yeah. able to and I think I, I used a minute amount of seeds yeah. in the two troughs so I've still got loads left yeah. that could go in so that's something that uh, Mandy could grow yeah. and yeah. it's something that she could use the, yeah. the crisp yeah. packets for again yeah. as well yeah with, that's with, right with and grandson. you can continue with those Gareth mm. because even if you haven't got a greenhouse mm. you can grow them in the crisp mm. packets or those um, cellophane sort of hard plastic fruit containers yeah. that mm-hmm. you get from the supermarket yeah ones with the holes in the bottom they are brilliant to be growing uh, all kinds of leaves in but what i would look at at this time of year are uh, dwarf french beans yeah mm-hmm. i'd also look at something like a short stumpy carrot yeah mm-hmm. um, they yeah. will grow quickly yeah things like chard you can set yourself some chard now. you can do autumn carrots at this time of year yeah. though like mm-hmm. autumn king or nanties too they yeah. are specific Eskimo, so have like a that, look yeah. mm-hmm. on the packets yeah because they are going into autumn yeah but definitely dwarf french beans they won't Take a yeah. minute and to of get course, going. if you want to see something on your plot over the winter, you can be getting in your kind of spring cabbages and um, things like cauliflowers, broccoli. Uh, no, not really broccoli, but kale, things like that. Yeah. You can be getting those in, and they will crop over the winter months. Of course, remember they will be much slower growing because we we're losing the daylight. We'll also be the temperatures will be suppressed, so they may actually not look like they're doing much. But then they'll get going in spring, and you'll have some spring cabbages and things. Yeah. And the thing is, Julia, I am going to go back to what uh, some older people have told me in the past, is that it's okay to have a bit of time off. Yes. Now, let's not forget, because once you plant something, you've got to look after it. So you're going to have to net it. You're going to have to make sure that if you get snow, that it's not touching or breaking things. So I think that there's some merit in running up to the end of the season, which is generally the first frost, and then start to plan what you're going to do. And also... (laughs) I'm just laughing because we refer to it as allotment porn, don't we, Elaine? We do, I love it. But come August, beginning of September, that's when the seed catalogues uh, start to come through your doors. The the Allotment Association will have your King's Seed Catalogues. That's when you take them into your shed and you just drool (laughs) over what you can be planting next year. And that's why we call them allotment porn, because that's what people do. And it's, it's really quite a bizarre thing that happens on allotments, but we all get excited about them. I mean, one thing, again, now you've got your greenhouse, the opportunity to grow flowers and set the set the seeds over the growing over the winter so that you have bigger healthier plants next yeah. year it's all very very exciting but uh, as elaine said sometimes it's just nice to sit back have a drink and look at the seed catalogs a lot more porn there's a new one <laughs> <laughs> Right then, so in summary, it is all about biodiversity and uh, we have talked about it, Julia, and I just think it is about planning. Let's get more things on our allotments to encourage bees and, as you've said, Gareth, if it is that we can get a beekeeper Mm -hmm. on to talk about what's happened this year. Where have all the bees gone? Long time no see. I was going to sing it. But, you know, this biodiversity word, Mm. it also means we've got to love slugs. Leave that thought with you. Nah, mm. nah. Out of here. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Right then, so thanks everybody. Are you going to say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> to everybody for getting involved. And next time, we will be talking, ironically, Mandy, about how to fill the gaps that are coming up. Ah, 
yeah so honestly stay tuned Mandy yeah uh, so thanks to Mandy and thanks to Gemma for taking their time out of their week to talk to us as well oh it's lovely it's I quite lovely. liked it that people phoned in with questions or yeah, contacted like us with, can we do that again Gareth yeah. when you say we can you do that again Gareth <laughs> yeah we have, we have the technology now we will rebuild him in one way or another you got the plan the Plotcast podcast with the Potty Plotters is an Amberland Media production <laughs> <laughs>